this video, we're going to write code in Excel VBA that automatically adds a date and timestamp to the right of a cell that gets edited. So what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create today. I have a list of different projects. Column D contains a drop down menu that has different selections for the different statuses of those projects. So when I change the status from not started to started, we get two timestamps to the right of this cell that gets edited. The first timestamp only populates when the status is changed from not started to started. The second timestamp updates any time a status is changed. So if I change this to pending review, you can see the first one remains the same, but the second one updates on that change. What I can also do is if I need to reset this back to not started, both of these timestamps will disappear. So the first thing we want to do is get into the VBA editor window. You can do that by going to the developer ribbon and clicking on this visual basic button or hitting Alt F11. Now normally I would right click go to insert and then module but we're dealing with a change event that is specific to the sheet we're on. So I'm going to click the sheet we're on, double click I should say, that's sheet 3 for me. I'm going to select worksheet from this drop down menu. This will automatically populate a selection change event subroutine. We don't want this, we actually want a change event. So I'm going to, in this second drop down list, select change get rid of this original one. Now this creates an automatic variable called target that is a range variable that represents the range where the edit occurs on our sheet. Now before we get into this one thing I strongly recommend is referencing application enable events changing this to false at the beginning of our subroutine and then at the end change it back to true. Change events can be a little dicey sometimes and what can often happen is the code will run and just run and run and run in an endless loop and this prevents that from happening. So the first thing we want to deal with is populating this cell, which is the started on date and timestamp. So this column, I should say, has the following conditions for a date and time to happen. One, the event, the change event, must occur in column D, which is column four. Two, the value in this cell previously has to be blank or nothing and three the status over here in the event cell has to be started so we have an if condition we're going to reference our target variable and then column we want to make sure that the event happened in column four and the cell directly to the right of where the edit occurred. So we're going to use the offset. We want to stay on the same row. So that's zero rows up or down, one column to the right. And confirm that the value in that cell to the right is equal to nothing. Now I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to hit space and underscore to continue on a new line. Our next condition is that the target value, the cell that gets edited, is equal to a status of started. If all of those conditions are met, then what we want to do is in that cell to the right of our target cell, we want to add the current date and time. So to do that, we're going to use the format function, and that has two inputs. One is the thing we want to format and the second is the format we want it in. 
the thing we want to format is the output of the now function, which returns date and time. And then the format we want it in is two digit month, two digit day, four digit year, hours, minutes, seconds. And we want that in AM, PM format. So this <clears throat> creates a variable of the current date and time and puts it in the cell to the right. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to display this. So to make sure it displays this actual format, what we need to do is refer to that cell again this time we're gonna set the number format equal to the same format we used up here so at this point we also want to populate this cell as well with a date and timestamp so we're just going to copy everything we've done thus far and change the column offset to 2 over here. So now we have our next set of if conditions and that is for anything that's really other than what just happened in our first round. So there is a value already here in this cell and this status here is not equal to not started and we still want the edit to occur in column four so I'm going to copy all of this and we're just gonna modify it we have our else if condition still want column four we want to confirm that the status in the cell to the right or I should say the value is not equal to nothing meaning it's already been started and the target value is not equal to not started then we really just want to populate this column here with the update date and time so I'm just gonna copy what we've done down here and that's the result we want so the final thing I'd like to deal with is situations where the status gets changed back to not started we want to maybe reset everything we just want to clear everything out so for our else condition we're gonna have another if because again we want our target column to be column 4 and this time we want our target value to be equal to not started then if those two conditions are met what we want to do is in the two cells to the right set them equal to nothing so we're going to change that to two and so this is the end of our if statement that is within our else statement we now need to end our original if statement up here that started up here so now I'll change this to started you can see these two cells both update if I change to a different status only this one updates if I change this back to not started you can see it clears out so everything's working like it should 
So one thing to point out here is that when I change this and try and update multiple cells at once, it's going to give us an error. Because as this code currently stands, it's looking at a single cell for a single value and we just tried to update a whole range. So I'm going to hit stop here and what we need to do is add a for each loop so that it runs through each individual cell one by one. So we're going to reference our target variable for each target in our collection of targets. And then down here, we're going to say next target. So now when I try and update these, we should get the same. And we do. So that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.